Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you all are doing well. Um, here I am broadcasting with my blood curdling voice. I apologize, I can't fix it. I know that it's a problem to some. But uh I was looking at something and I would like um if you if you could, my amazing um group of truth warriors my amazing community people ask me what community i'm from in youtube i'm not from any community i'm just from i got exiled the first time i ever really tried to go into a community i guess you could say and um i've been fortunate enough to have built friends and others that are looking at stories with me um in a way that we don't think in black and white. We think in the gray and we look to see and search for the truth and the facts and, and do our best to get them. Now, my channel and I, especially in this episode and, uh, and others, um, there are the facts which we can prove and then there are my opinions. And I am going to um, go forth and show another creator or one or maybe maybe even more than one today. Um, and I'm going to do so under the copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, where allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. And without further ado, without further ado, I would like to look at this with y'all. Okay, so this video really interests me, okay? So we'll go over here. Fox's parents claiming insurance money. Chris Watts okay. had a $450,000 life insurance policy on Shanann and the girls. Okay, wait, 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 and wait, wait. After okay, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't know how the camera in camera goes for this. So this woman looks and seems very confused i have been confused by the information that she w had put forth and i asked people to try to show me what she is talking about and to this date i can't find anything to um substantiate what she's talking about um i did two vlogs on what she could possibly be talking about and i would like to bring those up as well but for now if you could listen in and because it is echoey on her end um i will stop and repeat a lot of what she is saying so what she's her the title of her video is analyzing entitlement the watts demand shenan's life insurance money now what she stated is that Christopher Watts had a $450,000 life insurance policy on Shanann um, with accidental death and dismemberment through his um, employer at the time, Anadarko. And yes, he was employed at Anadarko at the time. He did um, receive his um, letter of uh, ending his um, employment with Anadarko while he was in jail so i know that there's rumors out there that say that oh he had lost his job no that is not true he was very much working um at the time of the unthinkable so she's saying this she's saying that the she is saying that the watts are very greedy and the watts are narcissistic and um so if you'll listen with me i'll, I'll keep paraphrasing so we can see if it's if it's not if you're not able to hear right let me see if there's a way to do her settings I don't see okay we'll keep trying uh -huh, her volume it's up all the way okay let's try again after they were murdered his parents apparently claimed the money for obvious okay so she's saying that Christopher Watts's parents went to try to claim the money okay all right 
these reasons, it wouldn't have been legal for Chris Watts to have claimed the insurance on Shanann and the children's deaths. So after he was arrested, it wouldn't have made any sense for him to have done that. But his parents still did. Shanann's parents and Chris's parents ended up going to court to decide on who was going to get the funds. And it doesn't say what the... Okay, so she is most likely referring to the Zurich life insurance policy right here. And that is where I will um, show you the truth and the facts um, when we are done with this um, interesting uh, report um, from this creator. She's saying that Chris's parents went and tried to get that money because the way that Christopher had the policy is he had the policy on his wife's life insurance where he would have been the beneficiary had something happened to him, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. If something happened to her, he would have been the beneficiary. That would go to motive, right? Well, you cannot receive that money if you are, in fact, the person who um, is either admitting, accused, cannot be ruled out, accepting responsibility, however you want to say it, as causing that death. Um, there's usually a, um, a murder clause in there, so you can't be like, mm, I'm low in money, I'm going to whack you so that I can get that money. Um, now, as he cannot take it and there are no living um, dependents so his his line of people to go down because you could say that okay then the next in line would be Bella the next in line would be CC the next in line would be Nico to receive insurance had something have happened to both Chris and Shanann okay so she's saying that this makes the Watts greedy that the Watts ran and tried to demand this money that the Watts were trying to take Shanann's life insurance money she further develops this into saying that the Watts are narcissistic in so doing and this is this is her definition of it and uh, she purports to be a therapist and she claims that the Watts are narcissistic the outcome was but the fact that the watts did go to court to fight this has enraged a lot of people and i don't think that that's surprising but okay so she's saying that the fact that the watts went and tried to demand shenan's life insurance money upset people and that's not surprising that people are angry about it because it's pretty shocking so cindy and she's Ro saying that it's it's pretty shocking that they would go and try to get the insurance money that their son had by their son's employer that their son had paid into that the watts trying to say that as there is no downward dependent to accept that money then could it possibly go to the watts are they um possibly the beneficiaries um she is saying that they're just that they did this and this is not right ronnie watts thought they were entitled to money that was going to be paid out because of the deaths of shanann and the girls at the hands of their son chris so what does that tell us about them first of all i think it shows a deep lack of empathy for what the ruzeks are going through Not okay so she is saying that them trying to say that and this is her saying this because i will show you that there is this is not what she is purporting is not exactly factual and she is saying that the the Watts, even considering that they would be in line as a beneficiary, shows that they have a lack of empathy for what the Rusiks are going through. 
essentially saying that the Rusiks have went through so much more than the Watts, which we will also um, debate. Not only do they not care about the people who deserve that and anything else positive that might come to them. Okay, after she says not only do the Watts not believe that they deserve or what, and where do we get into this deserve? Who took what? from who and she's saying that this makes the watts greedy and entitled to this horrible tragedy you know after they have been um all of them have been abused by chris watts who completely betrayed their trust and murdered their own family okay where is the proof that christopher murdered his family where where did she find this? It's not proven. He forfeited his right to a trial, which stopped the investigation in his tracks. There was a first confession where he said that he walked in on his wife unaliving the two girls, and he, in fact, then did unalive SW, her. So we can say that he admitted to unaliving her but why that's out of character um, by all accounts even her he was a good husband good father etc etc we don't have any proof then that that happened now years later at an interview in wisconsin that was not filmed that is rumored to be heavily edited christopher said the investigators wanted to hear because he no longer wants to ever talk about what happened that night. He wanted to make them believe what he said as he said he could make anybody believe anything. There is no proof. And myself and others believe that if in fact he did do that, there are mitigating factors that there are defenses in our legal system that allow for, even if he did that, there are surrounding circumstances that should have been and still need to be considered before we can say without any doubt what she is saying. She looks terrified of her own thoughts. And at this point, um, in the video, she looks so much like that, that I can only assume that she's sitting down because she's pulling the thoughts out of her ass. One by one, she's pulling the thoughts out of her ass. Okay, because that's the only thing that makes sense. You know, um, so not only do they feel a lack of empathy about that, but they also believe that they are entitled to this money, that somehow they deserve some of this money. Okay, what is to say that they do not deserve some of this money? How does that make the Watts, how does this say that the Watts lack empathy? How do you know what their intent would be for that money? How can you say that the Rusiks are entitled to more? When the whole story is considered, when all of the data is put together, how can you say that one family lost more than the other? Can you say it's because one cried louder, one, one um, asked for more money? What, what is the definition of one family getting more when we want to sit there and line everything up with who lost more? Is it because one family was closer to their child, their adult child? Well, then that would be the Watts 10 times over, and I'll tell you why. So what would it take to believe that you deserve this money after What would it take for you to believe that you deserve this money? She is posing that to the Watts. Why is that question not posed to the Rusiks? Why is it not said to the Rusiks, what makes you believe that you are more entitled to the money? Okay, and, and let's talk about how much money. Okay, because right now we're just talking about one insurance policy that Christopher Watts worked for, paid into, and had of his own, okay? Your son has murdered his wife and children. 
what would it take to think that you deserve it over the family of the people your son has murdered? You don't know. <laughs> you don't know that he did. And what makes you think that he did? As a psychologist or whatever she's purporting to be, how does she say that she knows that he did it and he just did this and one one side is entitled to more how does this make the watts wrong good way to spot how narcissistic someone is is to see what they feel entitled to do but yeah okay that's beautiful a good way to spot a narcissist is to um see what they feel entitled to okay ma'am let's let's write that Let, let's change your title and say a good measure measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they are entitled to okay man that that's actually good that's in your that's in your title and um so you said a good measure of a narcissist, of how to define a narcissist roughly, is to see what they believe they are entitled to. Okay, ma'am, you're saying that, and do you stand behind what you say? Because I would love to ask you um, what the Watts believe that they're entitled to and what the Rusiks believe that they are entitled to. And when each is listed, we're going to find that the two are neck and neck. Oh. Let's not use that. Anyway. To what extent do they feel they don't have to acknowledge another person's boundaries? Okay. This boundaries. Oh, <laughs> ma'am. Boundaries. That's an interesting and very loaded word. To what extent do they not believe that they need to acknowledge another person's boundaries? So she is once again saying that the Watts... The Watts have problems with boundaries. That's rich. Again, pull them this out of your This can ass. give us a clue as to how special they need to believe they are. Yeah, special. And the more special and superior special. they need to be, the more damaged they are inside. Yeah. So, so um, she's using the word special here, and I think that that word is of uh, is real relevant here because she's she's implying that the Watts are narcissists and that they believe that they are special and being special means that they are somehow entitled and that they do not need to um, observe others boundaries she's saying about the, this about the watts about chris's parents okay so there's no mistake here um very special lady you're very special narcissistic they're going to be so given this situation is extreme and that it's extremely inappropriate that they were fighting for money in court okay she's saying that it's extremely inappropriate inappropriate that the watts were fighting in court for money inappropriate that the watts the Watts were inappropriate. Once again, we're talking the Watts. She's saying that it's inappropriate that the Watts were in court asking for this money. Okay. Came as a result of the murders of Shanann and the girls, that they were fighting the parents of Shanann. Okay. For that she is saying that they are fighting the parents of Shanann. Okay. She is saying that the Watts went to court to take money away from the Rusiks. All this money, you know, I think that shows us how superior they needed to be, you know. And She's saying that the Watts, Chris's parents, needed to feel superior to the Rusiks. This is what she believes. How 
while um, they didn't need to abide by the normal rules of common decency. Okay, that, that uh, in that she's saying that the Watts did not need to follow the normal rules of common decency. Um, bitch, why don't I get my um, Black's Law Dictionary out and look at, oh, let me see here. If I can find the, the common decency. Mm, let me see here. Mm, let's see. Common decency. <laughs> common. Common. Okay, let's see here. We've got common, common, common. Come authors. Co-makers. Commitment. Commingling. Com common area. Okay, let's see if we can find them. Com common law. Common law copyright. Common law marriage. Common nuisance. Common property. And commonwealth. I don't see anything about the common decency. You might want to find it because wherever Other you can... people are expected to abide by. I don't know how conscious this is for Ronnie. I don't know how superior he feels to other people because we have a lot more information on Cindy. You know, she's okay. Leave Papa Ronnie alone. She's saying she doesn't know how this how this is about Ronnie, how this is affecting Ronnie because <laughs> she's saying that Cindy is the narcissist. Chris Watts's mom, like Mrs. Brady, like the Brady Bunch. Ma'am, are you confused as to which ones are which in the parents? Are you confused as to which ones are her parents in that? I don't know what is your problem. She's given herself away quite a lot in these different TV interviews and through her book. Cindy so Watts has given herself away as what? So, um, whereas with Ronnie, it's a bit harder to figure him out, I think, as a person, because we have limited information. But, um, but he at least believes that Cindy is superior. He seems to back her up, you know, when we... Uh, okay, so Ronnie backs up Cindy, so he believes that Cindy is superior. Okay, of all of the grandparents involved here, we've got Papa Ronnie, Grandma Cindy. On the other ones, we have... Well, we have Papa Roo, and we have Mama Roo. If I put all four of them out with everything that we know thus far, I think that a jury of Chris Watts' peers, a jury of my peers, a jury of my neighbor's peers, would be hard pressed to see Cindy Watts as the narcissist. Are you sure you're not mixing it up with Sandra? Are you sure? And Papa Ronnie was so sensitive and loved his son so much that when his son left at age 18, he developed a little problem with the uh, white stuff. He couldn't deal with his son being gone. So, when Shanann was 18, her mother, in fact, slapped her, and she left the house, and they didn't speak for years. She went off, got married. She didn't go back to her parents until she needed help with uh, the other little situation she was in. So, let's, let's measure that up as 18-year-olds, as and they reached the age of maturity. Chris's parents put him through NASCAR. He was a great son, a great student, a great brother, and went through NASCAR because that's what he wanted. So his, their parents, the parents put him through that, and he graduated with pride. He, and, but his dad missed him. Now, Shanann, on the other hand, she had her own thing going. She was dating, I, I, allegedly, she was dating um, her first husband, and they got married shortly after um, 
she told her male teacher that she appreciated his presence in her life because she did not, in fact, have a father figure in her life, that um, her father was an alcoholic and did not get along with her mother, um, and her mother and father preferred her brother over her, and so she did not feel the love of her parents at that age. Um, teenagers are teenagers. They're a difficult monster. I cannot say that that alone makes the ruse and her relationship valid. But as you go on and you see that there is a, um, a repeat undercurrent of Shanann saying that she cannot get along with her mother, that she can't, Christopher said she can't talk to her mother on the phone. Her mother drives her crazy. Um, there was a very troubled relationship between the Rusics and their daughter versus Christopher Watts did not have problems with his parents until Shanann came in and told him, in fact, me or them. And started the narcissistic triangulation because, in fact, it was Shanann who was the narcissist. Not Chris, not his parents. And it's embarrassing that you, you ma'am, have played into the oldest trick in the world. Where you see the actual narcissist as the victim. Well played. Well played, ma'am. Well played. Mm. Pray to God you do not have a following of people that pay you for this because how many people who have been abused by a narcissist and their snake-like features only to be accused of you being the narcissist yourself when you're very much the victim? Because the narcissist is so good at fooling others. Shanann fooled you, ma'am. She was the narcissist. She fooled many, many, many. Listen to, for instance, the conversations they have with Chris. He gets interrupted a lot by Cindy and seems to accept that. He seems to enable... She's, she says that Christopher gets interrupted a lot in conversations. So that proves that... She's a narcissist. Their conversations that we know of are interrupted jail calls. So there is a pause when you are talking to somebody who's in jail or prison. And there is a pause on the other line. So you are a delay. So you don't know when the other person is um, ending what they're going to say or beginning to say um, on either side. So that interruption is um, somewhat due to that. It is also that Cindy Watts is troubled and confused as to what happened and wants to know why her son will not stand up and fight. What does he have to lose? If he did do all of this, it's terrible, but there are mitigating factors. Okay? Everything needs to be considered. Her behavior. So now with her trying to claim this money, there he is going... <laughs> So they're with her trying to claim this money, as in Cindy Watts trying to clear to claim this money makes her shows that she's a narcissist. Cindy, good Go lord, with her going to court with her, backing her up. Um, so even if he himself wouldn't behave like this, if he was single, you know, if he weren't married to her, he believes that anyway she is superior, if not himself. And she believes so as well. That that's my Okay, it is becoming more and more clear to me, ma'am, that you have the Rusics and the Watts mixed up. Because she is saying that Ronnie Watts, that you can't tell whether or not he is also a true narcissist or believes that he's superior, because you can't really delineate him from her, but he He's there and backing her up in court and, and backing her up in whatever she does and ba and backing her up in this battle for money. Ma'am, you're talking about the Rusick. Um, because I believe that Frank Rusick on his own 
is a kind and understanding man. I do not feel the same for the behavior in which I have witnessed of his wife. And if in fact it is true, based on Shanann's testimony to her teacher who has been interviewed, where she said that her father is an alcoholic, what drove him to drink? Mm. Do you see him having to follow his wife around while she does this? Do you see him having to follow his wife around while his wife calls up and tries to dictate a whole scenario and a narrative to the police? And when they didn't call her right back, she threatened that she was calling the FBI and CBI on them when they had already involved them. And they went and signed, sealed, and delivered exactly what she said she wanted in less than 48 hours. And she kept calling them and saying that she had seen this happen in a dream and you want to say that the behavior of Ronnie Watts um, believe, makes you believe that he follows his wife around because his wife Cindy Watts is marching into court acting superior I'm serious I think you have them mixed up that is Frank Rusick following his wife, Sandra Orinati Rusick. My personal opinion, because I don't think if you didn't have that belief that you would be able to do that, you know, that you'd be able to go to court without just feeling really ashamed and embarrassed about what you're doing what? because i think cindy sees chris as an extension of herself when he does a crime like this that will reflect on her on how she feels about herself so whoa, 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 whoa you have a mixed up she's saying that cindy watts believes that if she sees she sees Christopher as an extension of herself, and if indeed he did commit this, then it's a reflection of her. No, 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 no. The greed of the Rusics is palpable. That they really liked Shanann when she had big showy things. That when they could say that she had this beautiful house, a mansion, that when she's out there in Colorado with this beautiful house and she has this and it's beautiful and beautiful and beautiful. That is the Rusics saying that what their daughter was doing was reflective on them. You don't hear the Rusics talking about their daughter being accused of the embezzlement and losing her job allegedly so she had to run to cal colorado and lay low for two years and not even be able to have her name on the next house or the vehicle or anything whereas christopher was responsible with his money and was able to finance that house. And his name is on the lease that she supposedly earned the vehicle from the MLM, but it doesn't have her name on anything. But you got it mixed up. It's okay, sweetie. You got it mixed up. She needs to feel okay with him to feel okay with herself. Because huh? I think they are, in her mind, one person. What? And I've talked about that more in other videos. But I think because of this, um, her claiming that money is also about her believing that he hasn't really done anything that she should feel as his mother horrified and ashamed by. It's more like... What? Ma'am, what do you smoke? I want some. Because it must be so wonderful to see the world like you do. What? What 
what are you even saying? That, oh, Cindy going to fight for that money means that... What? The what? What? Like, all of them were killed in a fire, including Chris, you know, and so she feels entitled to claim her half. So huh? it also gives us a clue about how she views the murders. And this is what? backed up by what she said to Chris, you know, how she said, I don't care what you did. Um, you know, that she still feels the same way about him. And yeah, that bitch, that's called unconditional love for your child. She's saying, I don't care what you did. I still love you. I will always love you. You're my child. As a mother, you don't, as a real mother, you don't turn off unconditional love for your child, no matter what they do to you. Do to others. She's telling him to fight, and that's what she has said repeatedly. She said, fight, Chris. I don't know why you won't fight. What happened? She wants to know what happened, and she's saying that she still loves him no matter what. If it turns out that what he said in the Wisconsin interview where they're all chucking around and why did the government pay for that interview anyway and bringing Christopher Watts chocolate milk and laughing and patting him on the back and everything is, is completely inappropriate. Um, we don't have other instances where we have investigators paid to go and um, yuck around with inmates like we see the Tamburglar doing. Um, that is a mother saying to her son that she may never be able to touch again, that her son may never see freedom again she is telling him that she loves him no matter what he did she has to she has to accept that whatever he did he needs to be able to talk about it because she believes like others believe That Christopher Watts is an American citizen entitled to due process, entitled to a, jur a jury of his peers determining what he did and if indeed what he did, he did alone, that he is responsible for doing that whether or not there was premeditation for doing that was not adequately explained to him the Wisconsin interview messed up because Christopher Watts said that when they told him that he was going to go to prison he didn't know he was going to be in there forever that does not show that he was given the details of his sentence with integrity and honesty. Okay? Cindy Watts is able to give her child unconditional love. A child who receives unconditional love, not based on how flashy and how much money they look like they have is more loved than most. A child who is loved unconditionally is very fortunate. That's not something to fault a mother of. I'm going to be looking at entitlement soon in another video. It's not going to be about Chris Watts. 
Um, the next video is going to be about Chris Watts. It's going to be about him and his sister oh. and how they interacted sure. during that jail visit in 2018. Right. But, um, but later, I'm going to talk more about entitlement because Please it's do. such an important part of narcissism. You yeah. know? <laughs> and I think it's a really good thing to look out for. If you're really? confused about whether someone's being narcissistic or whether it's you, whether their behavior seems okay, if there's something wrong with you and that's why they're being like that, then ask yourself if they're behaving in an entitled way. Oh, okay. If you so this is the way to determine if, if it's you or not. Um, so the, if, to determine if you're being gaslighted or not, to see if somebody's being an, a narcissist or not, you're supposed to ask yourself if they're acting entitled. Okay. So, you just said that Christopher Watts's mother said that she loves him no matter what. Is that Cindy Watts acting entitled? That doesn't seem like it's entitlement. What have you shown us that the Watts are entitled, what, that they're acting entitled about? Analyzing entitlement. The Watts demand Shanann's life insurance money. Okay, so you're going to prove to us that they walked into a court and they demanded. They demanded Shanann's life insurance money. And, and that is uh, a measure of how to determine Entitlement and narcissism. Okay, I got it all. I got it all. I got it all. If you were to take their behavior and imagine yourself doing it, or one of your friends doing it, or someone you think is nice behaving like that, would it, uh, would it happen? Would you or these Yeah, other I think that if I looked at a friend's mother, if I looked at um, my neighbor's mother, if I looked at my husband's mother saying, I love you no matter what, if, if, you know, her son is accused of the most heinous crime in the United States, arguably the most publicized one, and she's saying that I love you no matter what, I don't think that that's entitlement. I, I don't, I don't see what you're going, I don't see where you're going here with this, ma'am. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Can you guys take notes for a minute? I need a three minute break. Once again, I'm in the middle of the night doing this and the alarm for the washer is going off, which is going to wake up everybody. And I've got to shut that thing off and get the load in. So please take notes amongst yourself. I promise I'll be back. Boo boo, come and summer. Come and summer to laundry. Come and summer.
you for work. Did you talk to everybody? Yeah, did you talk to them at intermission? Did you? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that intermission. Okay. So, where are we at? How people behave in that way, or does it seem a bit extreme? And like, it doesn't really fit with what you would think would be normal, common decency. Common because decency. if it doesn't, then it's likely that's because they feel entitled to behave like that in a way that most people wouldn't feel entitled. And, and it can help to think of it like that because that is reality, you know, and I think a lot of people blame themselves and they think, oh, someone's treating me like that because there's something wrong with me. Where okay. in reality, people Ooh. don't behave like that. Okay. She's talking about um, how to identify a narcissist once again and um, that you can tell because the narcissist makes you feel like there's something wrong with you that you start to deny yourself. Now let's think back to any conversation, any live that we've ever seen with Shanann Watts and Christopher Watts. We see him being talked down to. We see, we've seen the texts. We've seen the raging manifestos that she has written to him about how stupid he is. And if he wants to be stupid, he can live with his stupid parents that tried to murder her children due to their stupidity. You see Christopher Watts looking down. You see him looking dejected. You see him looking embarrassed. You look, see him looking silent. How would anybody mistake him for the narcissist? In the snapshot, in the Polaroid shot, where people think that he is a family annihilator. Absolutely. Because mainstream media sold it like that so they could make a lot of money. Again, this one here is talking about entitlement and how to tell who is acting entitled. Well, entitlement often does seem transactional. That by somebody acting entitled means that they are looking for money. Okay, so where did the money go in this case? There are many people who took what this one here said and ran with it. She has basically a hive mind echo chamber going with her. She's got, what, 50,000 subbies running off into the world repeating what she's saying? That the Watts did this, the Watts did that? Let's keep playing. Let's play it out here. If they don't feel entitled to, if they don't for some reason believe that they're superior to you, and if anyone thinks that they're superior to you, then they're deluded because oh. people aren't superior to each other. Okay, if anybody believes that they are superior to you, they are deluded because nobody is superior to another. Okay, so we're going back on her saying entitled. And in this case, she's saying that who went to court trying to get money is entitled. And that entitlement translates to delusional. Okay. Let's keep going. Other, you know, and, and it's only our beliefs that let us think they are or that we are. You know, so you can have someone who everyone thinks is superior, maybe some kind of celebrity, but again, it's just a delusion. You know, nobody is. So you can have a, a mass delusion where everyone believes that this person is definitely superior. To okay, so when you watch videos, like the Tamburglar did, of Shanann talking about how she's going to be a better person, how she is going to be a better seller, how she is going to um, not listen to the haters and do all of these things. And she is sitting on the couch talking about herself, filming herself 
and the cam goes over and the person who is sitting down shrouded over playing a game with the children quietly on the floor that was christopher watts so in that living room who feels superior to the other is it the person on the floor hunched over playing a game with his little girls well their mom his wife sits on the couch and talks about how much more she is going to be how much better she's going to be than she already is better who's the narcissist in the room who's acting entitled and who is actually doing the hands-on interactive care with the children who decided that what Christopher Watts was doing was not enough who decided that he wasn't thin enough good looking enough who told him that he was in fact inferior who told him that she wasn't he wasn't her type who put a substance on him to make him perform better even if it meant that he didn't get to sleep like other humans did who did that who's acting superior who's acting entitled who's acting like they deserve all of the money who's the one actually quietly earning it honestly to everyone else but that doesn't mean it's true so if anyone behaves as if they're superior to you then they've deluded themselves okay so this is funny this pops up another one of our videos so it says if anybody is acting better than you superior to you they're deluded so should we go to that um rage that's in the discovery where um shanann told Christopher Watts, all of the different ways in which she felt he was defective and all of the terrible things that she was saying about him while praising another man openly. Cindy and the Golden Child. Chris Watts's jail visit. Oh. <laughs> oh. And they're feeling entitled. So in the next video, I'm going to be looking at Jamie's interaction with Chris. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe no. and I'll see you in the next video. No, thanks. No, thanks. So. And the problem is, is that she really is going into the group think. She really is going into. Um, an echo chamber where what she says she wants others to say back to her so let's check this out here let's see so she says here let me see here hold on hold please it says a uh, good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they are entitled to okay let me see here let me see here oh what's this oh oh what is it Sandra Rusick. Let me see here. <laughs> What'd she say? Pull up for precise seeking. Sandra Rusick, Franklin Rusick Sr. Franklin Rusick Sr. as personal representative of the estate of Shanann Catherine Watts versus christopher lee watts date filed november 19th 2018 just shortly after christopher was sentenced sandra rusick look at how it notes her first it does not put her husband first which is unusual in a marriage people generally will put the husband's name first so you could say oh they do it alphabetical nope the F comes before the S. So who's following their wife all around doing these things and standing behind in court? 
Well, it seems like Franklin Rusick is. And what did she say? A good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they are entitled to. That's what that one I just showed her definition of a narcissist. Now, this, in fact, this was filed very, very shortly after Christopher Watts was sentenced. Um, so you can say that this was in the makings. From this, Sandra Rusick and Franklin Rusick, and Franklin Rusick Sr. as personal representative of the estate of Shanann Catherine Watts versus Christopher Lee Watts, Sandra Rusick w was, in fact, awarded a $6 million wrongful death suit. This is the Rusicks going to court, running there, after they had already had a GoFundMe that covered the funeral five ways from sideways and built a big, huge outdoor kitchen with a wood fire pizza oven, allegedly. And has made it so that the Rusicks have never had to work a day in their life since the tragedies, allegedly. And... They had already had Christopher Watts uh, um, release the money while he was in jail for the funeral. It is rumored that they also got money from the Crime Victims Compensation Fund for their stress and whatnot. That, that they, are, they wrote down that they are the victims of the crime. Um, and then they ran and did this. Okay. The only place you see the Watts here is that you see the Watts as, as you see the Watts as the defendant is Christopher Watts. Um, so this is one thing. So that completely negates what that creator who I just showed you was talking about in her thing, except for where she did say a good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe that they are entitled to. And here you go. This Sandra Rusick believed that she was entitled to to a six million dollar wrongful death suit okay she's saying that her loss was worth that much more than what the other grandparents lost you don't see the watts coming here okay now let me show you another thing that she may have been referring to which is just bizarre and like i say i'm just a little tiny creator here I can't fix the narrative. What I can do is try to show the truth. Because she's got so many subs out there. And those subs are going out there writing all over in chats everywhere. That the Watts are greedy. And the Watts took, took, um, the, um, the, um, I can't even think of it. It's so stupid. The Watts did what? The Watts tried to take money. And the Watts are narcissists. And the Watts are in court begging for money and the Watts are superior. They're, it's it's mind-boggling because it's not based in truth. It is idiots repeating what idiots are saying. They're like cockroaches. Is that maybe if you feed a cockroach, it goes and feeds other cockroaches and I don't know if the light shines or something bad happens. Something bad has happened here. So let me see here. So while we're defining what a narcissist is, Let's go over here. So I made this into a little um, playlist for you. Um, it's called Who is the Greedy Narcissist? The Rusicks. Um, versus the Wants. Let's see here. Let's go into this. This is a possible thing in which her confused ass is. could be referring to. This is confusing and I will admit that. But okay, this is where it starts. So. Let's see here. Let me see here. I hope that I made this right. Okay. So what we have here, my friends, is what people may see and run with. So it is in the United States District Court for the District of Colorado, a civil action, number 120.tac.cv, tac 01598, okay. tac rm, tac meh, Zurich American Insurance Company with the plaintiff. So Zurich American Life Insurance is the plaintiff. So look at this. And it's versus, okay, so the, on the plaintiff's, okay. So what we have here is Zurich American Life Insurance versus the Rusicks as the defendants 
Okay, we're gonna go down here and check this out. Will this show us? Side they one. have here, they have Franklin Rusick as personal representative of the estate of Shanann Watts, ET all defendants. Okay, so we come in here, and what this says is that this is an unopposed motion to interplead funds into the court's registry for dismissal without with prejudice and for permanent injunction. Plaintiff Zurich, Zurich, Zurich American Life Insurance Zurich, by and through its attorneys, Kutik Rock LLP submits its unopposed motion to interplead funds into the court's registry for dismissal with prejudice and for... Okay, so what this is is that Zurich American Life Insurance did not know who to give this money to. They could not decide if it went to the Watts as the surviving relatives because it's Christopher Watts's insurance policy that he worked for, he paid into, that if anything happened to his wife, he would receive. If anything happened to him, his wife would receive. If anything happened to both of them, it would go to their dependents, okay? So this is Christopher Watts's life insurance that was first because Shanann was unalived. Okay. So Zurich is saying, does this go to the Watts or does it go to the other grandparents? Now, how did it come into being that Zurich considered the Rusiks as opposed to not going upwards with the um, beneficiary? It seems as if Zurich came here and said they did not know exactly what to do. They are looking to the court for a remedy. Okay. This is not the Watts running to court saying they are entitled. In fact, the way that this is stated is it lists both the Rusiks and the Watts versus Zurich American Insurance Company. It is both. Neither are saying in this particular action that they are entitled to it. And by this time, the Rusiks had already filed and could have already been awarded that $6 million wrongful death suit. I don't know the date of the finality of it, but that creator, once again, her definition is a good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they are entitled to. Okay. These are the only two things out there that show anything involving the Watts. The wrongful death suit does not have Cindy and Ronnie running and saying, hey, their son doesn't need to do this. They're not named in that. The Rusiks did that. Again, a good measure of a narcissist to see what they believe they're entitled to. Acting superior than another. Crossing boundaries of another is how... She defines a narcissist. And like I say, I believe she is purported to be a therapist. And her whole um, platform is, it's her channel is called Live Abuse Free. And she's got the abusers and the perpetrators mixed up. Indeed, a, a narcissistic abuse is very, very difficult to understand and identify Narcissists are snakes. They are charming and deceiving. That's why they get away with it. If anybody was to see the narcissist for what they are, they'd get called out. But they do things and they work their victims down so low that the victim believes that they are the problem. When you see that nice, shiny, picture-perfect family and the children grow up to talk about the massive amount of abuse in that family, 
No, but your mom, she had you in the best outfits. Your house was beautiful. It was always so clean. Not going to believe those children because the pictures look perfect. You think that a narcissist doesn't like looking picture perfect? Interesting. I don't see... I don't see how she has um, as many subs as she does. Oh, I'm at a 9-11. I think she's like at 50 grand. So I, <sighs> I got to keep doing what I can to try and fix the, um, problems. Let's see here. So we have this. What if I... I want to see a permanent injunction requesting that the court enter an order under federal RCVP 22 and 28 USC squiggly line 28, 2361 allowing Zurich to pay to the see. court for certain go ahead. and Cindy Watts. Here you go. Okay. So, so it says... Defendants are Franklin Rusick individually and as personal representative of the estate of Sandra Rusick, Ronnie Watts, and Cindy Watts. The Rusicks are the parents of decedent SW and grandparents of decedents BW and CW. The Watts are parents of the imprisoned CW and the grandparents of decedents BW and CCW. Okay, they did not mention Nico. Now is Nico the deciding factor? Well, let's play with that. Let's say which set of grandparents is more. Is it. Is Nico fathered by Christopher Watts? In the discovery. Christopher Watts. Did in fact. Take a paternity test. And the results of which are not. Made public. The Rusicks have said, yes, that was Christopher's baby. Our daughter ha would not have had an affair. Okay. Does that mean that she would feel responsible for her daughter's behavior if she did? So does that say that that is Christopher Watts's baby? So then, okay, so we've got grandchildren on each side, three and three. Okay, so then you say Shanann is no longer living. Christopher Watts is imprisoned. He is living, but he does not have freedom. Okay, so then you look at it and you say, well, who lost more? And the quick answer would say the Rusiks because Shanann is not there. But then you look at the troubled and complicated relationship that she had with her family in life. And you look at the relationship that Christopher Watts had with his family. Then you determine who was closer, who lost more. Okay? When you argue that out piece by piece, you're going to say the Watts lost more as they had a stable relationship with their son that was based on unconditional love. Until and when SW entered his life. Okay? So, let's take that out and tease this out to say who lost more. Okay? So, we're going to do this on a little scale. And we're going to go, okay, the Rusiks and the Watts, let's say that they both lost three grandchildren. Now we are talking about um, the relationship. Um, the Watts with Christopher, he was a good son. He was a good student. He was a good brother to his sister. He was um, a good mechanic. He went through NASCAR. His parents put him through college. They, they invested in their son. They invested that money into his education. Um, why is this not looking right? Are you frozen? Are you frozen? Let me see here. 
you see this. This right here may have espoused some of I want to make sure I'm not talking to myself the here. The rumors. As I say, the legless lizards that Chris didn't want to get in his boots grew legs and came out. That's mm -hmm. what happens. Some little Am nuggets. I, like talking to myself or not? Let's see exit full screen. Scroll for details there. Let me see here. Hmm. And you guys are like, I can hear you, dum dum. I can hear you. Let me see. I do that. I do that. I do that. Okay. I am there. Okay. So let's go here. The Watts invested how much money for him to go in college and pay for NASCAR school? Okay. That's important. Did the Rusics pay for Shanann's education? No. And she did not go to further education. She did not go to college or a trade. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, so we've got, okay, education they paid for. So we can do that. Um, Christopher stayed single. He was a bachelor. He dated the one um, cougar when she was fresh out of a divorce. Um, and then he started dating Shanann. Shanann said he was such a great boyfriend, not her type, but he would do because he stayed with her um, through the whole colonoscopy thing and sat there and let her lay his head her head on his lap even though he had to pee and so he was a keeper okay um when he became a dad um Shadan was known for saying that he was such a good dad and such a good husband and that he took such good care of her okay um when they worked at ford he was top mechanic. She was top in sales. Okay, so there you go, neck and neck. Now, as an employee, every job that he had, he was the top at. He had no issues in his employment. Okay. And by all accounts, he's a model inmate. He's caused no problems for anybody. Okay, we don't know what happened in that night. We will look at that. So there you go. That's, that's the value of their son. So then let's go over here to say who lost more with the Watts and the Rusics. Because the Watts are saying they lost this big picture. Well, their son is technically alive. He does not have the privilege and the, the gift of freedom that was taken from him. So when you go over here and um, Shanann herself said that her relationship with her parents was problematic in the teenage years she did not feel loved she felt that she did not have any relationship with her parents that her teacher her male teacher who was older was um a source of male support as she did not have that as her dad was an alcoholic now i do not see that from the outside i see him as a very supportive and loving father um that's me seeing that i i think that he's a a man who unconditionally loves who who hurts and is sensitive it seems that she had more parents with her mother than she did her the father and um shanann began selling in mlms with her father at a very early age as a teenager i believe she said around 14 or 15 she started selling amway with her father and she did have that time with her father alone without the mother it is reported that the mother and Shanann had a blowout when Shanann turned 18 that um, the mother slapped Shanann and Shanann left, got married, and did not speak with them for years. So you have that part of the early adulthood that is troubled that Christopher Watts did not have. In fact, his dad missed him so much. His dad developed a substance abuse problem because he missed his boy. He missed his best friend. Christopher Watts does not report that time of feeling unloved, of, of not having a parent to love. So let's keep saying who who gets who gets the money here? Who lost more? 
Well, um, Shanann then worked with her father at um, the Dirty South. Um, there were problems there. She did have a suitcase of $50,000 that she um, showed and got a house built, the same as her boss. And she had that um, suitcase of a suitcase of $50,000 cash and probably not even in the same vernacular or not, but she was accused of a large amount of cash missing from her employer. And she did, in fact, lose that job. So um, she had to sell the house with the furniture in it and break even. And she had other debt at that time that um, she was did not take responsibility for. Therefore, when um, they built the house, her name was not on that house Christopher Watts added her on after the house was financed so um that happens I'm not passing judgment on it I'm just saying who lost more when they when when we want to sit there and say who's acting entitled here as to who lost more um we're going really neck and neck um so we don't have those problems we have Christopher being a responsible employee um not going into debt we have um Shanann being in debt, um, having problems with money. Um, she joined several MLMs and continued to do those MLMs until whatever did happen. She sold, um, oh, what was it? Uh, there's many rumors that she sold the Osborne books and the LuLaRoe and the Monet. I believe that those were when you're like kind of in the MLM business, you trade back and forth, you trade products. I could be wrong. Um, it is reported that she sold the Amway Cosmetics, the Cosmetics, C-A-U-S Medics. And that's where you see those videos of her putting the makeup on. Those were videos to sell that makeup. Um, and she sold the 31 bags and... Oh, what are those origami owl, those cute little lockets. Um, so she was very much into the MLM world before she was even out of the house. So the MLM uh, bug was in her from being a teenager, you know, from, from her father on in on out. Um, you have... She started Thrive in 2016, and that is where you see the majority of the friends that um, comment on the documentaries and whatnot. You don't see a lot of long-term um, friends and relationships, whereas you do see that with Christopher. He was a good friend, reportedly, by by all of his friends. You see them having lifelong relationships with. So... um. You can say that the Rusiks went and moved in with Chris and Shanann for 16 months um, and helped with the girls. Um, and they sold the MLM as well. Um, so you can say, okay, they came out there. Well, the Watts did come and help also. Um, it is reported that Shanann told Cindy Watts not to allow her, her Shanann's mother, to hold Cece, the baby, that well, she and Chris were gone. She only wanted Cindy Watts to hold her child. Okay. Well, we see, we see some more um, issues with those relationships. Now, Christopher Watts only got into the disagreements with his parents when Shanann came in to the picture. Okay. So there you go, neck and neck. You say, who, who lost more? Do you say it's because of who who had the least amount of um, arguments with their child, who loved their child more, who who gave their child unconditional love? You know, who knows? You can't really tease it out. So is it correct that the Rusiks have a $6 million judgment in addition to most likely being paid out that accidental death that, that um, Zurich brought up who was entitled to it? Um, a good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they're entitled to, said that one. And it looks like the Rusiks believe that they are entitled to more. And when you come down to neck and neck, who was the better, better adult, um, Shanann or Chris? Chris was responsible. 
Shanann was not. When it comes down to money, Shanann always had money problems, always spent more, spent more money than she had. Christopher Watts earned, was a good provider, kept insurance for the family, um, and Shanann took money behind his back to fund her MLM trips that she did not qualify to go to. She did qualify to go to some. She did not qualify to go to all. And she was taking money behind his back. So he was earning the money. She was spending the money and not telling him. And in fact, she was having her friend pick up the mail when she was gone so that her husband would not even be able to see his own mail. So put Christopher and Shanann against each other and say, did the Watts or the Rusicks have a more responsible adult as a child who lost more in this big picture? Okay. Then you say, as this creator says, a good measure of a narcissist is to see who, what they believe they are entitled to. Well, the Rusicks win hands down 10 times over. They believe that they are entitled. They cross boundaries and they are inappropriate absolutely and 1000 times there is no way shape or form that an investigation should have ever been ran by shanann's mother calling up detectives and talking about things that happened eight years ago at a bridal party that they feel that the watts put food with gluten out around the guests and that was cross-contamination what what does that have to do with the loss of the grandchildren okay sandra called up and told the detectives that their daughter had a beautiful house like a mansion and chris's parents said it was the most beautiful house they'd ever seen Okay, that is the Rusiks acting as if their child's behavior is, in fact, an extension of themselves and is behavior that is, in fact, acting superior than another over and again. Now, what happened that night? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. Who lost more? Can you say who lost more? There's an argument to be made on both when you look at it. Okay? Now, one of the favorite sports of a narcissist is triangulation. And that is getting um, two against one. It is the narcissist having flying monkeys. That the narcissist themselves feels inferior and does not feel strong enough to hold their own arguments. So they get somebody else with them to go against the other. And if you look at the relationships that Shanann globbed onto in the MLM, she globbed onto that last MLM because it afforded all of these people so you never walk alone and she would sit there and use every single one of those people in her downline and whatever to text daily about the problems in her marriage and use each of those friends downline MLM buddies to disparage and demean her husband that is, in fact, acting superior to another human being, and that human being was, in fact, her husband. The triangulation began very early in life when she felt that her parents did not love her in the same way that they loved her brother. Okay? Now, when you look at the ways in which Shanann was not treating Bella and Cece very well at all. I am not a gifted creator. I, I talk, you can listen. I'm not good at visual. I would absolutely recommend looking at Neeks Peaks, N-E-E-K-S, P-E-E-K-S videos as they show Shanann's own words, own actions on film so that you can see 
the behavior for yourself and draw your own conclusions. That is where I believe that you can find the best information on how she was, in fact, a mother. Okay. After watching those videos and from what I saw myself, I hold myself and others to a higher standard of motherhood. That in fact, if I saw somebody treating, mistreating their children in the way that she was to those girls, I would not be their friend. I would confront them and I would report them to Child Protective Services. Hands down, straight up. Child Protective Services very rarely, if ever, does anything. So I would, in fact, make it known that I confronted her myself and document the dates. And I would not be a friend. I would not enable. I, I would not do that. I hold myself to a higher standard of motherhood. I would have never mistreated any one of my six kids in the ways in which she mistreated her children. triangulation began very early her mom taught shanann to do so her mom taught her that she was better than the watts so sandra and shanann went against cindy watts sandra and shanann went against ronnie watts Sandra and Shanann went against Christopher's sister. Those are all in the books in which are referred to, and you can see it as how the fighting began. Now, Shanann didn't like her parents as much as uh, Shanann's parents would like you to believe that they did. I believe that the Rusiks love their grandchildren. They had a difficult relationship with their daughter. And that is why there are the large gaps in which once she was accused of the large amount of cash missing, that may or may not have been in a suitcase, um, allegedly. She left North Carolina and she did not bring those girls back to North Carolina until in the six week period prior to the unthinkable. If you listen to my series, The Real Board Housewife of Saratoga Trail, especially episode three and four, you're going to hear how I believe everything went down that day. I kept accidentally hitting stop record, so it is in four parts, and I babbled too much in the first two, and I'm sorry for that, but you'll get the gist of it if you listen to that. Now... Shanann wanted control. That is part of her narcissism and her walking over boundaries for control. She took Christopher and made it, it was, it was her and Christopher against the world, and that meant against his mother, against his father, against his sister. In all of the fights that Shanann's mother and Shanann started against all of the Watts. Shanann worked on Christopher and turned him against them as well. It did not last. And any time they were involved in the marriage, it caused problems until Shanann decided to use them as babysitters so that Shanann and Chris could leave out of town for these vacations but then she went on more vacations than she was actually qualifying for she was buying her rank and she was buying products using christopher watts's money to pay for the vacations and the airfare she was then in fact spending time with another man and again on neeks peaks if you look at the video called dna hearsay it will expound on that better than i can The triangulation happened in the MLMs, in every personal relationship. The triangulation is one person acting superior over another. And as we saw that creator say, a good measure of a narcissist is to see what they believe they are entitled to. And if you're ever questioning it, who's acting superior? Well, 
Did Christopher Watts ever once act superior to Shanann? What happened when he did try to stand up for himself? She brags about how she beat his ass all the way outside and put him on the porch. Now, once she got into the MLM thing, she wanted him to act like they were exercising. She asked him to post on his Facebook that, oh, they had just came in from a run and put pictures of her tennis shoes, etc. In which they had not just came in from a run. He didn't want to lie, so she grabbed the phone and posted on his Facebook for him. He was not selling in the ways that it would look like, so she was buying his ranks as well. Okay? It's a lot of money coming out of the money that he's working and is not being actually brought in. That's why she was not making the house payment and not telling him until it was very, very close to them getting foreclosed. So she came to him and told him that they were three months behind. It was actually much more. He got out the money from his retirement. She used the retirement to go on the six weeks to North Carolina. The airfares back and forth. Listen to my real board housewife. It'll explain. So then we go. She started putting on the stickers, and I I coined the term silly stickers that people have now. When she put them on him, he started working out. She thought, that's great. That's great for advertising. I can use that too. I can not only say that I don't have to take 25 medications for my lupus. Um, In fact, my lupus is gone because of this MLM and She had to change it to health challenges because I'm quite sure that she got schooled about um, not being able to say that. And she did not refer to the illness as lupus anymore. It was health challenges of which she did not have anymore once she started using the products in that MLM. Other people who have bona fide lupus have not um, reported the same uh, amount of remission as she has. So he started working out because... She put these stickers on him. He started getting a metabolism that made him start to lose weight and want to work out more. Now, what happened in that, as he reported, that his watch would show that he was working out 24 hours a day because the stickers that she put on him made him feel different than he ever had. And to the effect that he only could sleep three hours a night. She liked that as she had him doing all of the hands-on care for the children and all of the housework, yard work, etc., etc., even making sure that he washed the girls' clothes and did not put them in the dryer. He had to get up, get the girls their bottles and whatnot, unlock their doors that they had been locked into for the previous 12 hours so then they could walk out and go into Christopher and Shanann's bedroom and watch TV and watch their mom get ready for the morning. He had made their lunches if it was a daycare day and he had packed their backpacks to if they had swimming or um, anything else. He packed their backpacks. He did everything. And then when he picked them up or she picked them up in the evening, then he would bathe them, do their rectal thermometers per her commandments, Um, He would give them the medication that was not directed by a doctor to give, especially to Cece, because it was under the age that is safe um, to give said medication. And each one would read each child a story. So Chris read Cece a nighttime story. Shanann read Bella. No, I have it reversed. Shanann would read... No. All right. Shanann would read Bella, her nighttime story. Chris would read Cece, the bedtime story. And that was their night. Um, They really didn't have intimacy. They didn't talk. Intimacy by connecting and um, talking and enjoying each other's company. She liked that he was working out because then it... It made that look better. He was progressively going longer and longer as a sleep-deprived person. If you only sleep three hours a night, 
you are going into long-term sleep deprivation because your body is not reaching the correct cycles of sleep. You're not hitting REM, okay? So she was aware of this. She thought it was great because he was able to do this and that. Um, She made the commercials out of them. So when we're talking about the Watts and who lost what, what if the stickers that she put on Christopher Watts in fact caused the unthinkable? It is, she said that she wanted him to be healthy and live forever. So she wanted him on this program. Okay. She also knew that he was not sleeping more than three hours a night. Okay. Now, chronic sleep deprivation can cause high blood pressure, high blood pressure, according to the CDC, chronic sleep deprivation, which sleeping three hours a night would be, can cause high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, obesity, diabetes type 2, and mental illness, okay? That's according to the CDC. So she's giving him something saying that, oh, she put it on so that he can live forever. She put that on him and saw that he was not sleeping. She was aware of the fact he was not sleeping. That didn't bother her because he was doing more. Okay? Now, according to www.healthline.com, um, after three or four nights of no sleep, you start going into some serious things. And this is no sleep, okay, which we know can cause this, you know, that. So if you go to no sleep versus chronic sleep deprivation, there's a couple of different vernaculars that go on. But with no sleep, you go to the hallucinations, you have cognitive impairments, you have irritability, um, you have delusions, you have paranoia, and you have psychosis, and you make risky decisions. And that's with no sleep. Now we get a little bit different when we talk about um, long-term sleep deprivation, which, again, sleeping um, less than the recommended seven or eight hours of sleep for an adult, you get into all kinds of sleep, (laughs) all kinds of problems. So let's see here if we go. um, What if we go to... Um, there's self magazine and it says that, um, Emmanuel during MD, a sleep specialist at Stanford sleep medicine, um, center trained in psychiatry and neurology says that our brains don't function as they should when we're sleep deprived, when we're sleep deprived, it's like the brain is on fire, like it's on a stimulant drug. He tells self part of the brain, parts of the brain are working together in a chaotic way. Okay, now we also do know or are suspecting that those silly stickers had a stimulant. If, in fact, when he had those stickers on, he said that he felt different than ever before and that he could only sleep three hours a day. How long was that going on? When others reported the irritability, and she reported the irritability, saying that, oh, the girls could pick up on something, something wasn't right. And that he was getting crabby? Well, it's because he wasn't sleeping. That's reported. So we know that he was showing the signs of sleep psychosis, sleep deprivation. When you go into sleep psychosis, we've got a whole, whole list of other things going on. And I've talked to that. I've talked about that previously. Um, The irritability says that you can become impatient and short tempered and have difficulty concentrating. Um... You should make sleep a higher priority right away if you start noticing these symptoms, okay? Um, People talk about sleep deprivation and the hallucinations that they have in this article that I was reading. Um, It says that, um, you know, stress can cause the lack of sleep. Um, And money can cause stress, of course. Um, If 
here is a thing that, uh, and it talks about in this other magazine, it's called The Very Well Mind. It talks about your sleep debt. So when you go long term without getting the right amount of sleep, um, you can have, okay, it says some of the most significant negative effects of sleep debt may not be obvious to an outside observer but can cause severe impairment on a daily basis including false memories Hmm. like the ones reported in um, Wisconsin or Colorado we could say both failure to stay alert hallucinations increased levels of stress hormones memory impairments problems processing information problems with the ability to think clearly Symptoms of psychosis, symptoms similar to those of ADHD, triggering of mania, um, trouble sustaining attention, um, the list goes on and on. So when if we were to break this down and say that she put these on him because she wanted to sell this product, she wanted to sell this product not to make her family better, but to make her life better because she was the one who was enjoying all of the vacations that he was not even going to she was spending time with other men who lost more if we want to put the culpability on who did what who put the substance that may or may not have caused christopher watts to snap go into sleep psychosis to have delusions when he says that the actions that happened that night are as if somebody else had control over him, that somebody was behind him doing things, that he doesn't remember what was going on. And in fact, that was the first time that he had ever even had an affair beginning in the two months. And you put a sleep expert on the stand and the defense and the prosecution get their sleep experts and they battle it out. Bottom line, why were those products on him? Because she put them on him. Why did she put it on him? Why wasn't what he was doing as a father and a provider good enough? Why wasn't it enough? Who lost more, the Watts or the Rusiks? Who was never happy and content with what they had? Who wanted more? Which side of the family was more concerned about image? Which side of the family was more concerned about how the behavior reflected upon the family? Who was the narcissist? Where did the narcissism come from? Who acted entitled? Who acted superior? Don't come at me with simplistic bullcrap. That you can't, you, so you're blaming her for this? No, I am not. But there is a cause and effect. And whatever happened did not happen just because somebody thought it'd be a real good idea to do one night. A lot of people lost. And how dare anybody say that one side lost more than the other? And how dare anybody say that the Watts are where this problem started from? How dare anybody say that the narcissism came from the Watts' side? And how dare anybody say that the Watts ran to court and said they were entitled to anything? And how dare that creator that I showed say the things that are not based in fact and have all of the people who are unable to think outside of the box go around and repeat what she said so that now you see people all over in comment threads that have nothing to do with anything saying the Watts are greedy, the Watts went to court and the Watts sued and the Watts got all this money and the Watts are narcissists. No, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a psychologist. Very close to finishing my master's in forensic psychology. 
and I'm a law school dropout. But what do I know? Maybe nothing. But I can tell you that I know a lot more than somebody who espouses things that have no basis in fact, and in fact, probably were just pulled out of her ass. With that, I will thank you all for listening. Please subscribe. Please like. Please comment. I'm doing my best to get caught up with comments as I go. I will do another live again when I feel like there are enough questions that I can kind of work with um, to have conversations um, that are um, fruitful and beneficial to all. And I thank you all for being part of the solution. When we look at these problems together, we can identify the rhetoric and show that the rhetoric is not based in fact. And we can have a better understanding of what did happen. Because until we understand what did happen, we cannot prevent what happened ever happening again. And we want to prevent anybody ever being in the position that Bella and Cece were. We owe it to them to figure out the truth. We owe it to all of the Bellas and the Cece's of the world to do better and see better and identify better and not to be fooled by people who don't know what they're talking about and don't bother to look at the truth and the facts. And with that, I will close. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.